Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Jack Sherry, who's the Chief Growth Officer at Life Yield. Jack, welcome to the program. Great to be on, Mike. Thanks for having us. Hey, you're welcome. So I'm always interested in learning from people and what they have gleaned in the industry. And you've been in the financial services industry for a minute or two. So give us a little bit of your background and your entrepreneurial journey and what brought you to this point in your career. Well, early on, I was an entrepreneur, tennis pro, uh, energy conservation, software salesperson, principal of a tiny company. Over time, I evolved into sales. I was a wholesaler, as it's known in the financial services industry, where I was representing uh, asset management and annuities and what have you. Grew into uh, the corporate life of a national sales manager, had a marketing, chief marketing officer. So I went from entrepreneurial to corporate, but I was back in the day, if you recall, there was a term called intrapreneur. So oh, I've yeah. always been that. I've been a troublemaker. I've uh, <laughs> created patents. I've I've turned organizations upside down, done a fair m- number of turnarounds, so very entrepreneurial. Um, uh, finally had enough of the corporate life, uh, probably about 15 years or so ago now, and uh, decided I w- had one last gig left in me. <laughs> I was the chief marketing officer at a large insurance and asset management company at the time, and uh, went out and uh, connected with some friends, a company called Lifefield, where I now am a principal and a partner in the company. And what we do is we help improve outcomes for investors, advisors, and firms. Uh, We increase uh, after-tax returns and income by a third over time. So it's uh, software as a service. Uh, We are very much the entrepreneurs. We are uh, disruptors. And uh, uh, a lot of what I do is I tell the story, I sing the song, and ultimately try to transform the industry. I love it. That's very well said. I can tell you're very practiced in speaking that. So that's awesome. <laughs> and I All want to true. comment. All true. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And, and I, I guarantee you're not even reading it. It just flows. No, so that's, just that's, what's, out. that's exactly <laughs> the mark of a champion. You know, I want to comment too on um, intrapreneur. A lot of people don't even know that phrase, but I have sure. taught mm-hmm. marketing for 12 years yes. uh, through o- online uh, uh, schools. And I actually taught a class several times over the yes. last few years called yeah. intrapreneurship. Yeah. And it is yeah. such a huge skill that I think, um, you know, you get a lot of employees that are like, give me a raise. And when you give me a raise, I'll do better for you. No, no, it's backwards. Yeah. You yeah. need to be that force to be reckoned with so that you're yeah you're like an obvious choice. Like we must give this person a raise and being creative and entrepreneurial all within the confines of an organization that just really elevates your status. So I think that is just spectacular and it's a mindset. It's a giving of value. It's giving more. So that's just so huge. So I can tell that since that is how you're wired, then that's the value you provide to your enterprise clients with your product life yield. So let's, let's uh, merge into that. What exactly is is life yield and how you serve your clients. Yeah, let me touch on because I'm going to complete the thought on the entrepreneurship, which you highlighted. Early on, I, I really was in a startup turnaround uh, uh, situation where the company had, I was with at the time, uh, Phoenix Investment Partners had $16 billion in assets on the way to zero. Uh, we were in a downward mm-hmm. spiral. I was brought in from Putnam, one of the large uh, asset managers at the time. And what we did is we we built and bought a, a variety of asset managements, created a collection of boutiques, uh, asset managers, really changed the industry. And that's my favorite thing to do is change an industry, especially one like the one I'm in that needs to be changed. We'll talk some more about that in a sec. But what I did with the employees there, what I do with my clients, what I do with colleagues now is I'm always trying to add value to every conversation, to, to listen well to what they do. Another side note, Mike, I don't think I mentioned uh, I wrote a book on listening and storytelling for oh, another nice. time and another podcast. But <laughs> by listening well to what your client, what your constituent, what your colleague is trying to achieve and helping them achieve that, I never have to incent anyone. Yeah, we have the money out there. We've got the, all the opportunities in terms of advancement out there. Very much want to have that there. But it, how you achieve that, how you move forward is by showing them the way and having them really embrace that. And that's really what we did way back when. And what we're doing at Lifefield 
we our our clients are, are, are really the name brand firms of, of the financial services industry. So that includes Merrill and Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, uh, includes Ameriprise, includes a lot of big firms, um, and uh, we also work with a lot of fintechs as partners. But essentially, what Lifefield does is we help the investor. Ultimately, we do it through advisors and through firms. So we're only available as an enterprise uh, uh, purchase. We are on the desktop of the advisor, and we help pull together the full household portfolio, and we improve outcomes through tax optimization by one third. And that's a study that was done independently by Ernst and Young. EY did the study about uh, a number of years ago, and basically found by coordinating all of the different assets, holdings, accounts in a household, you can improve uh, outcomes significantly. And so that requires a lot of work on the part of the of the, the buyer, namely the firm. And we work closely with them to integrate it so it's fully enmeshed in what they do and how they do it. But it's a win for all. The, the client wins in a big way. The advisor yeah. wins with more assets. And ultimately, the firms uh, have more net new assets, more money flowing to their, their firm. It- you know, I love that explanation, and it makes me think of a question. Sure. Because I think statistically, if you have advisor A that works for, you know, firm A, they have a client, and they might manage whatever they were managing, but it's statistically not all the money that that family has. True. So what True. you're saying is by uh, bringing all of this in together and maybe uh, having a, a software printout that says, hey, here's what we're managing. Now, what yep. else do you have? Yep. What else do you have? If we yep. had everything and if we could integrate it in together and achieve this, wow, look at that. Now, we can't give you this return because we don't have this piece and this piece. So yep. talk a little bit about how your software shows the transformation, the increase of returns by a third, and then how that kind of naturally attracts the families to go, well, if that's the case, yeah, we need to move our other, you know, pieces from these other, you know, miscellaneous, you know, vendors over to, to you guys. Yeah. So, uh, the, our firm is about almost 15 years old. So we've been at this for a while. We were the first on the street with it. And I remember this, I was on the advisory board. I hadn't quite joined the firm at that point. And, uh, I brought them in to some old friends at, uh, what was then Smith Barney as part of Citigroup, Citibank. And, uh, we, talked about that what you just described very well. Uh, we described what what we were up to. The software was in motion, hadn't been completed yet, but it was on, on its way. And the people who were in charge, old friends of mine in the business, senior execs at, uh, at City at the time, uh, said, this is great. It's the future. Just don't tell our advisors because we can't get to it. We're busy with a merger. We're not going to get to this thing for years. So that's how it started. Uh, eight years later, we finally sold what is now uh, Morgan Stanley, the, lots of combinations over time. Mm-hmm. And then in two, 2018, Andy Saperstein, now the co-president of the, well, of the, of the, indus, excuse me, of the business of Morgan Stanley, um, made a statement in Barron's. He said, we have half of our clients' assets and our, our growth uh, strategy is to get the other half. And how they decided to get that other half of the assets, and this is true, by the way, of all firms, Morgan Stanley is not alone. Most firms have about half the assets. Most advisors have half of of the full, uh, what they they might have. What they went about doing is collected a bunch of software, integrated it, coordinated it, make it all work together. We're central to what they're doing because ultimately you have to combine all the accounts to get at that tax alpha that I I just described in terms of that improved outcome. And so they went about that starting in 2018. Over the past three years, they've been the fastest grower of net new assets by what they've done. Now, they've done some uh, acquisitions and mergers along the way, E-Trade, and they developed something called Morgan Stanley at Work, their retirement business. But notwithstanding that they grew through acquisition and merger, they also grew in terms of bringing in more money from their same source sales, if you will. And what's happened now is they're in the top three with Fidelity and Schwab in terms of the largest growers of net new assets. So if you bring the, if you give cause and we show how much more money a client would have in, in their personal situation yeah. by pulling the assets together, when we do that and then demonstrate that they're going to have an extra $150,000 over a period of time that they wouldn't have had otherwise, they say, well, what if I bring all the assets yeah. together? Will it be more? And that's what we do. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I know you've probably heard this um, in your uh, vast business experience, but remember the old saying, and it's still current, it costs five to seven times more money to get a new client than to retain a current client. 
Sure. Right. Sure. And and those yeah. numbers might be seven to ten five. But the point is, if a, an agency wants to grow revenues and assets under management and all of the things, the, the metrics that we're looking at, do you want to go out and acquire new clients, families, businesses? Of course. But you might be missing out on what you already have. And if you look at your, you know, client base and you only have 20 percent, 40, 30 percent of their assets, boy, you can dig deeper and earn the rest of their assets or a good percentage mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. and not even have to go out and cold call market seminar, whatever the case is to get new clients. Yes, you need to still do that, but you're you're missing out on what's already under your nose by providing sure stellar sure. service and kind of like a, um you know at the end review imagine pushing a button and going poof here's this report now mm -hmm. their eyes are kind of like wide like saucers going wow that would be amazing and you're going i'd love to do this for you but we can't quite do it because we don't have everything meshed together integrated together yep. and managing yep. for you yep. and it's almost so, like you just sit there and smile and wait 10 20 seconds of silence and you've just dropped the mic and it's like wow you've proven yourself we've been with you for several years and now you're saying if we move this piece and this piece and this piece the the you know sum is greater than the parts yep how much of a sale really is that at that point yeah i'll give you a couple of other examples so there's a company called Empower, which is uh, based in Denver, uh, owned by a Canadian company. Uh, they acquired a number of different retirement asset blocks. So they, from Prudential and from JP Morgan and from Putnam Investments and from uh, Prudential. So they bought all these retirement assets and spent about $8 billion in the process, mm -hmm. by the way. Ed Murphy was the CEO there, had a very smart strategy. We'll get the assets together and then at Empower, and then they bought a little company called Personal Capital, which is uh, really a, the first virtual uh, online wealth management firm. They put all that together in addition to what they already had at Empower in terms of servicing people with retirement assets. They put it all together. And now what they're, they've done is they are the second largest uh, uh, firm in the industry after Fidelity in terms of retirement assets and growing like crazy. Because what they're doing is they're providing greater service to this block of these blocks of business that heretofore were just kind of barely taken care of. Now they have all sorts of capabilities, technology. They show the kind of things that I've described in terms of improving outcome and putting a quantifiable dollar value to it and showing why it makes sense to consolidate the assets. So they're not going out to find new people that don't know them. They're going to existing clients and saying, mm -hmm. we're going to give you a better value proposition. You're going to have more money with us. You're going to get uh, much better taken care of. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's almost like w w when you had said something a minute ago, I uh, made a note to come back to it. How do you change the industry? And I think you just articulated it right there. Y you know, it, and too many times we're, we're out there doing the hunter gatherer. Let me get yep. more, 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 sell, sell, sell. And, yep. you, and that tends to really train us to treat clients like a number like okay you got the sale done signed the papers high five see you later goodbye next but hold yep. on now now it's you know like you remember back uh i used to be in the mortgage business about 15 years ago and you would go to a real estate closing well in reality it's an opening. It's an opening yeah. of a relationship. Yes. So the mindset shift of starting that relationship with that couple, you know, so here's your, your uh, uh, software providing large enterprise clients the ability for agencies to provide their producers with yeah. this power to sit down and go, we need to show you some amazing things. And the problem is they're always out there trying to get the next client and the next client. And maybe possibly their current clients are like, oh, well. Okay, I, I guess I guess you really don't care about me. So yeah, I'm going to keep my other accounts with these people. Yeah. So I think this yeah. is such a neat way to fill in the gaps and and you know keeping things uh, from falling through the cracks, plugging up the holes in the bucket is those proverbial things. So um, talk a little bit about what's next. I mean, like this is a spectacular you know solution. Is your then um, mission to kind of keep banging that drum to change the industry by providing this, or what do you see in in the upcoming years to come for Life Yield? Yeah, it's interesting, Mike. We, we we find ourselves in a position because we're focused on taxes. That is the single biggest expense investors incur. And in order to manage that and reduce the tax burden and 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 have more money as a result, uh, you need we call there's nine different ways to achieve tax alpha. And in other words, improve that that outcome. But it's complicated, it's hard to explain. A lot of my role, frankly, is to make sense of what, what we're talking about here. So what we're doing now is we're working with those firms, and I mentioned Empower, I mentioned Morgan Stanley, there are many more, 
that we're working with to help connect the dots as we talk about it, where they're taking their retirement business, their 401k business, they're marrying it up to their wealth management business. So we're working with firms, Morgan Stanley is a good example, where they have E-Trade, which caters to a younger uh, uh, affluent client, but on the rise, will have more money over time and more complexity. And they they have a 401k business where they work with a variety of different folks on that side. Mm-hmm. So it's a starting point, typically younger, although you have the full range of, of employees that might be participating in a 401k program, but you get them started early. And what they're ultimately looking to do, and we enable this because we can quantify the benefit of the tax alpha that we generate, we can show that by consolidating the assets, whether you're a 401k participant or you're uh, an E-Trade client, or you might be working with a Eaton Vance Parametric, another firm they bought, an asset manager, wherever, however you come at them, we can show you the benefit of putting the assets together. So now we're working with literally every firm in the industry on this topic. It's frankly, long and arduous because it's very complex. The systems weren't built to work together, to coordinate, to fully integrate. And that's where we spend our time. So what's next for us basically is we're doing this. We'll have, we've will have we had a number of announcements recently. We have many more in the queue, but it's really about bringing it together. And then frankly, operationalizing takes time as well. So, yep. and there's training and there's culture and there's all sorts of stuff that goes with it. So it really is a transformation for the industry. And again, as I said earlier, it's beneficial to everyone in the in the in the value chain it's beneficial to the consumer beneficial to the advisor and beneficial to the firm and when you can start quantifying those things of the um third uh, uh, increase to mm-hmm. the agency, to the enterprise client, whatever your price point is, they're like dropping the bucket. Let's go, you know, because you, Actually, start- yeah, you know, it's interesting what it costs for us. We, we, we pay in that. We, we did a study this a number of years ago. We did a study. Our payback is four months, something mm-hmm. like that in terms of the value. And we're not cheap. It's not that yep. we're inexpensive, but in terms of the value of what's rendered, because we're all we're doing is we're rooting out uh, the opportunity for the client yeah. or the consumer to pay unnecessary taxes. We're just eliminating that, or at least setting it up so that it can be eliminated. And when we show them the benefit, another piece that we add to the mix that some of your listeners might be interested in is that there's a way to manage your social security benefits in such a way that it's best to wait to your age 70 because the government gives you a raise between the age of 62 mm-hmm. and 70. 8% so we have, Yeah, so 8% guaranteed that's on top of all the other stuff we do. So all these different ways to add add the ability to just have more money, uh, to have more peace of mind. And what we're finding now in the marketplace, because there's so much concern with the economy and inflation and the markets and all the stuff that people talk about, and this will go up and down. It always does, always has. Uh, but the point is that they want to have a greater assurance because we have something like 12,000 people retiring every day currently and it's at a record level and these folks just they they know they can't go back so they want to make sure they make the most of it so in terms of what's next it's really making what we do available and work with our partners across the industry to to help transform how business is done um i love that and and it made me think of something too like um rather than trying to sell this widget you need you guys are creating the narrative and the story and creating a crusade in reality that yes. once people buy into that they're like yes yes then it's like oh well to do that we need you need our tool which is right and yeah. you know i've i've heard it said um before you need to sell the transformation but not really getting the weeds about the transportation because people don't care about the transportation to get to that transformation just yet. They want, they must understand it. You can't shield it or hide it, but at the outset, you need to go, wouldn't it be nice if, and wouldn't it be neat if you could achieve this and eliminate that? And they're like, yes, yes, yes. So you're selling the transformation, which is your, you know, your product, your vision, your mission. And once they buy into that, then it's like, oh, well, we have the software, which aligns, it brings in and allows you to. And now it's like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. Whereas if you just approach someone with, here's this software as a service tool, it costs X where, you know, here's the line, the sign on the dotted line. No, we need no. to be almost like, what's the crusade we're on, you know, yeah. and like yeah. be the Pied Piper and say, come on, get on the bandwagon. We're here to champion this. And you guys have done that and you keep doing it. And I think um, you, you, you think of like, you know, the Steve Jobs and, and Apple, you know, they, they create things before we even knew what we yeah. wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're very much actually, you, you're very astute, Mike, because you just described my job. I'm I'm missionary uh, in chief. That what I do is I sell yeah. the transformation. 
uh, just between you and I, you can't do what I'm describing in terms of transforming our industry without us because there's no one else. We don't have a direct competitor. We have people that kind of do tiny pieces of what we do, but you really need to do the whole thing or you're not doing it. And so essentially what I do, I, where I spend my time, I write articles, uh, I, I podcast, I, uh, I'm very active on social media, I speak at conferences and on and on webinars, et cetera, et cetera, where I talk about this. And I talk about this mission of, of improving outcomes for all, democratizing investing, making for a more secure retirement. You, can you tell I might have said this a few times? Yeah. The point <laughs> of all that being is that what we're uh, I'm selling this transformation really persuading the as to the opportunity. And and I just know you can't do it without it. So I don't have to sell life yield on yeah. how great we are. We're great. Trust me. All you know, a whole bunch of people are, are have us installed and we'll will attest to that. Point of all this is how do we transform the industry? Because there's a whole lot of inertia. The good news is we've got the momentum going. Firms are changing. They're embracing what we describe as comprehensive advice platforms or comprehensive yeah. wealth management ecosystems. But they're complex. They're hard. There's lots of change. They're not cheap. It takes a while, but the payoff is huge. Yeah, I think that uh, what I've been seeing in the news and the financial services industry, because that's the world that I play in as well, helping to you know do marketing for that world, and I see that it's fragmented. And these agencies are like, we need more of the pie, you know, and all the things we've been talking about. And if you can continue to to drill into the psyche of these agencies to go, you guys need to, you know, at the same time, like hire someone that handles your business pillar of new business, but then hire someone that handles the business pillar of going deep and maintaining your current clients and getting more, all of the things we're talking about. It cannot be just a, like a, oh yeah, well, we, we send out a monthly newsletter. It is not enough. You know, yep. what more yep. can we do? And uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, I think an author, but have you ever read the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg? I have not, no. Excellent book, spectacular book written in a um, fictional storybook format. But basically, you know, it's the opposite of being a go getter. You know, he's a real mm -hmm. go giver. Mm -hmm. And the concept is give and serve and give value and educate. Don't sell, sell, sell. Just be be yep. there yep. and give yep. value. And what goes around comes around. And when you take that approach, people really feel like, wow, you I I thought you were going to be like a salesperson. But in reality, you're coming in like giving and giving and giving. Wow, that's yep. that, what can I do to help you? And it's like, oh, yep. well, here's what. So I think it's that mentality. And I really appreciate that and applaud that because I can tell that's what you've been doing and will continue to do. So, boy, it's been mm -hmm. such a pleasure talking with you. So if someone is listening to this going, man, um, I really need to get a little bit of info on this, Jack, what's the best way that they can learn more um, about Life Yield and then also reach out and connect with you? Sure. Lifefield.com uh, is the best place to go. It's all there. Also, I welcome any and all to visit me on LinkedIn. I post a lot of what we're, we just talked about. Do uh, uh, I blog on LinkedIn, and uh, we have our podcasts that are produced or showing up up on, on LinkedIn. So, Jack Sherry, J A C K S H A R R Y, uh, and, at LinkedIn, and uh, would love to uh, love to connect. Excellent. Well, Jack, thank you so much for coming on. It's a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Thanks, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.